I can't take this anymore. Brett's voice cut through the tense silence, his face contorted with rage. Why the hell should I listen to you? My heart sank as I braced myself for the inevitable confrontation. What was supposed to be a pleasant family dinner had quickly spiraled into a nightmare. Tessa, my stepdaughter, shot me an apologetic glance before turning to her fiancé. Brett, please, this is my family. Family? He scoffed, glaring at me with utter contempt. She's nothing but an outsider who wormed her way into our lives. The insult stung like a slap to the face. Anger and hurt swirled within me, but I forced myself to remain calm. I've been part of this family for over fifteen years. Show some respect. Respect? Brett let out a derisive laugh. You don't deserve an ounce of it. Aaron, my husband, finally spoke up. That's enough, Brett. You've gone too far. But Brett wasn't done. He turned his venomous gaze toward Harper, my younger stepdaughter. And you're just her little lapdog, aren't you, blindly following her lead? Harper's eyes blazed with fury. How dare you talk to us like that? I'll talk however I want, Brett sneered. This is my family now, and I won't have some stepmother and her pet trying to control us. That was the final straw. I slammed my fist on the table, causing the dishes to rattle. Get out of my house, you ungrateful bastard! Chaos erupted as Tessa tried to calm Brett, while Aaron attempted to reason with me. Harper stormed out of the room, her footsteps echoing in the hallway. I glared at Brett every fiber of my being seething with rage, you've just made the biggest mistake of your life. As the argument raged on, I knew there was no going back. The insults, the disrespect, it was unforgivable. In that moment, a part of me died, replaced by a burning desire for revenge. Little did Brett know, he had awoken a force he could never comprehend. A mother's wrath. I should have seen the cracks forming years ago, but I was blinded by love and the hope of creating a complete family. It all started when I met Aaron at the office holiday party. He was a divorced father of two girls, Tessa and Harper, struggling to balance work and parenthood. I was instantly drawn to his warmth and the way his eyes lit up when he talked about his daughters. Six months later, we were married, and I found myself thrust into the role of a stepmother. Harper, the youngest, embraced me with open arms but Tessa, already a rebellious teenager, kept her distance. She's not my real mom, she'd mutter under her breath whenever I tried to connect with her. Aaron brushed it off as a phase, but I could see the resentment growing in Tessa's eyes with each passing year. Give her time, he'd say with a reassuring smile. She'll come around. But she never did. The battles became more frequent, over curfews, boyfriends, and eventually her choice of college. Tessa made it clear that I had no say in her life. Stay out of it, Yolanda, she'd snap, her voice dripping with venom. You're not my mother. Each word felt like a dagger to my heart. I tried everything to build a bond with her, but she shut me out at every turn. One night, after a particularly heated argument, I broke down in front of Aaron. She hates me, I sobbed, burying my face in my hands. No matter what I do, she'll never accept me. Aaron pulled me close, his embrace offering little comfort. I'm sorry, sweetheart, I'll talk to her. We'll sort this out. But we never did. The years passed, and the chasm between Tessa and me only grew wider. Harper remained my lifeline, the one person in the family who truly understood me. Don't give up on her, Harper would say, her eyes filled with sadness. Deep down, she knows you love her. But Tessa's hatred had taken root, festering like an open wound. And when she brought Brett into our lives, everything changed. The first time I met him, alarm bells went off in my head. There was an arrogance about him, a sense of entitlement that set my teeth on edge. So you're the stepmother, he'd said, his voice laced with disdain. I forced a smile, determined to make a good impression. It's nice to meet you, Brett. I've heard so much about you. He simply sneered and turned away, leaving me standing there like a fool. From that moment on, Brett became the catalyst that tore our family apart. He fueled Tessa's resentment, whispering poisonous words into her ear, turning her against me and Harper. And now, after that fateful dinner, the bonds that once held us together had been shattered beyond repair. As I lay awake that night, anger burned within me like a raging fire. Brett had crossed a line, and I knew there would be no turning back. It was time to make him pay. Tessa's announcement of her engagement should have been a joyous occasion, a chance for our family to mend the fractures that had formed over the years. But deep down, I knew better. 
I want you all to be a part of this, Tessa had said, her eyes shining with hope as she clutched Brett's hand. Harper beamed at her sister, genuinely happy for her. But I couldn't shake the sense of dread that settled in the pit of my stomach. Of course, we'll be there, Aaron promised, wrapping an arm around my shoulders. This is a celebration for all of us. I forced a smile, determined to make the best of the situation. Maybe this was the olive branch Tessa and I needed to finally put the past behind us. That naive optimism was shattered a month later at the engagement party. The evening started off pleasantly enough, with family and friends gathering to toast the happy couple. But as the drinks flowed, Brett's true colors began to show. To Tessa and me, he announced, raising his glass with a smug grin. The future, Mr. and Mrs. Keaton, starting a new chapter in our lives without any unnecessary baggage. His eyes locked onto mine, the implication clear. Harper must have sensed the tension because she quickly intervened. Ah, oh, come on, Brett. We're all family here. Family? He let out a derisive laugh. Don't kid yourself, Harper. Once Tessa and I are married, we'll be cutting ties with all the dead weight. A hush fell over the room as everyone processed his words. I could feel the blood draining from my face. Aaron stepped forward, his voice strained. Brett, I think you've had too much to drink. Let's take a break. But Brett wasn't done. He turned his venomous gaze toward me, his words slurring with each insult. You're nothing but a parasite, leeching off my soon-to-be wife's family. Well, let me make one thing clear. You and your little lapdog over there have no place in our lives. That was it. The final straw. Before I could stop myself, I hurled my glass at him, the contents splattering across his smug face. Pandemonium erupted as guests scattered, screaming and shouting. Aaron tried to restrain me, but I was beyond reason. You miserable piece of trash! I screamed, struggling against my husband's grip. How dare you speak to us like that? Harper rushed to my side, her eyes blazing with fury. Let's get out of here, she hissed, grabbing my arm. As we stormed out, I caught a glimpse of Tessa's devastated expression. But in that moment, I didn't care. Brett had crossed a line, and there was no going back. We spent the night at my sister Lynette's, Harper doing her best to console me as I raged about Brett's insults. He's a monster, I spat, pacing back and forth, and Tessa is too blind to see it. Lynette watched us with a pensive expression, her gaze filled with concern. You know what you have to do, right? I froze meeting her eyes. A silent understanding passed between us. It was time to fight fire with fire. And Brett was about to get burned. In the days following the disastrous engagement party, a dark cloud of anger and resentment hung over me. Brett's vicious words echoed in my mind, fueling the flames of revenge that burned within. Aaron tried to reason with me, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Sweetheart, think about what you're doing. This isn't the way to handle things. I whirled on him, my eyes blazing. And what would you have me do? Sit back and let that bastard disrespect us like that. He recoiled at the venom in my voice, but I was past the point of caring. Brett had awoken a fury in me that could not be extinguished. Harper remained my steadfast ally, her unwavering support a lifeline in the storm. Don't listen to Dad, she said, squeezing my hand. We'll make Brett pay for what he did. Her words were like balm to my wounded soul. At least someone understood the depths of my pain. It was then that Lynette dropped a bombshell. She had connections that could expose the skeletons in Brett's closet. The guy's been cooking the books at his company for years, she revealed, her voice low and conspiratorial. Embezzlement? Fraud? You name it. A wicked grin spread across my face. Perfect. It's time we brought that scumbag down a few pegs. Harper's eyes widened, but she didn't protest. Instead, a matching grin tugged at her lips. Over the next few weeks, Lynette fed us information about Brett's shady business dealings. The more we uncovered, the more my hatred for him grew. Aaron, oblivious to our machinations, continued his efforts to reconcile. Tessa's devastated, he'd say, his brow furrowed with worry. She needs her family right now. I scoffed at his words. She made her choice when she decided to marry that piece of trash— don't expect me to feel sorry for her. The rift between us deepened, with Aaron growing increasingly frustrated with my stubbornness. But I didn't care. My sole focus was on making Brett pay. As the wedding date loomed closer, the tension in our household became palpable. 
Tessa's phone calls grew more desperate, he pleading with us to attend the ceremony and support her. Please, Mom, she'd beg, her voice thick with tears. I need you there. The use of that word, Mom, sent a pang through my heart, but the wound Brett had inflicted was too raw, the betrayal too deep. I'm sorry, Tessa, I'd reply, my voice devoid of emotion. But I can't be there for you this time. Harper remained steadfastly by my side, her loyalty unwavering. Don't let her guilt you, she'd say, wrapping an arm around my shoulders. We're in this together, and together we would strike, unleashing a storm of retribution that would leave Brett's world in ruins. As the wedding day drew near, the calm before the storm settled over us, but I could feel the electricity crackling in the air, the promise of vengeance waiting to be unleashed. Brett had no idea what was coming for him. The days ticked by with agonizing slowness as Tessa's wedding drew near. Each time the phone rang, I steeled myself for another round of pleading and guilt-tripping. Mom, please, Tessa would beg, her voice thick with desperation. I need you there. It wouldn't be the same without you. I could hear the tears in her words, but my resolve remained unshaken. I'm sorry, Tessa, but you made your choice when you decided to marry that monster. Harper would squeeze my hand, a silent show of support as I delivered those harsh words. She understood the depths of my pain, the utter betrayal I felt at Brett's hands. Aaron, ever the peacemaker, tried in vain to reason with me. Sweetheart, this is tearing our family apart. Can't you see how much this is hurting Tessa? I rounded on him, my eyes blazing with fury. And what about how much Brett has hurt us? Don't you dare try to make me feel guilty for standing up to that piece of trash. He recoiled at the venom in my voice, utterly helpless in the face of my wrath. Lynette, bless her soul, remained my steadfast ally. Don't let them get to you, she'd say, her voice low and conspiratorial. We've got the goods on Brett, and it's time to make him pay. With her help, we compiled a dossier of evidence, financial records, emails, and witness testimonies that painted a damning picture of Brett's illegal activities. Embezzlement, fraud, insider trading— the list went on and on. As the wedding day drew closer, a sense of grim satisfaction settled over me. The storm was gathering, and Brett had no idea what was about to hit him. The night before the ceremony, I sat alone in the darkness, clutching the damning evidence in my hands. Memories of Brett's insults, his utter disrespect, flooded my mind, stoking the flames of vengeance that burned within. This wasn't just about teaching him a lesson. It was about protecting Harper, ensuring that she never had to endure the pain and rejection I had suffered at his hands. A soft knock at the door pulled me from my thoughts. Harper slipped into the room, her eyes shining with determination. It's time, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I nodded, rising to my feet. Together we marched into the night, the weight of our mission heavy on our shoulders. As the first rays of dawn peeked over the horizon, the authorities were already in motion, armed with the evidence we had provided. Brett's world was about to come crashing down around him. The morning of Tessa's wedding dawned bright and clear, a cruel mockery of the storm that was about to be unleashed. Harper and I arrived at the venue early, slipping into the back of the ceremony hall like two silent wraiths. We kept our distance, watching from the shadows as the guests began to arrive. Aaron tried to approach us, his face etched with worry and confusion. Delia, Harper, what's going on? Why are you hiding back here? I met his gaze, my expression cold and unyielding. Don't worry about us, Aaron. Just enjoy the show. Before he could protest further, a commotion erupted near the entrance. Raised voices and the sound of scuffling reached our ears, cutting through the excited chatter of the guests. Tessa appeared, her beautiful white gown billowing around her as she rushed toward the disturbance. What's happening? Brett, where are you? That's when we saw him. Brett, disheveled and wild-eyed, being led away in handcuffs by two stern-faced officers. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd as they took in the shocking scene. Tessa's face drained of color, her hands flying to her mouth in horror. Brett, what's going on? Why are you being arrested? He tried to struggle free, his voice a desperate snarl. It's all lies. Those bitches set me up. His eyes found mine in the crowd, and for a moment our gazes locked. A twisted smile curved my lips as I reveled in the sweet taste of revenge. The officers hauled him away, his curses and threats echoing through the hall. 
Tessa collapsed to her knees, great heaving sobs racking her body as the reality of the situation sank in. Harper gripped my arm, her eyes wide with a mixture of shock and satisfaction. You did it, she breathed. You really did it. I nodded, unable to tear my gaze away from the unraveling disaster before us. Guests were fleeing in droves, their faces etched with disgust and disbelief. Tessa's bridesmaids hovered around her, their expressions a mixture of pity and embarrassment. Aaron pushed his way through the chaos, his face pale and drawn. Delia, what have you done? I met his gaze, my expression unapologetic. I did what needed to be done. Brett got exactly what he deserved. He shook his head, his eyes filled with a mix of anger and sadness. This isn't how we handle things. You've gone too far. But I didn't care about his disapproval. In that moment, all that mattered was the sweet taste of victory, the knowledge that Brett's reign of terror was over. As the dust settled and the venue emptied, Tessa remained a crumpled figure on the floor, her dreams and hopes for the future shattered around her. Harper squeezed my hand, a silent understanding passing between us. We had won this battle, but the war was far from over. Brett's downfall was just the beginning. In the days following the disastrous wedding, the news of Brett's arrest and the subsequent fallout became the subject of intense media scrutiny. Overnight, Tessa and her disgraced fiancé became social pariahs, their reputations in tatters. "'Can you believe this?' Harper would exclaim, brandishing the latest tabloid article with a mix of glee and disgust. "'They're calling him the embezzling ex-fiancé.' I couldn't help but revel in Brett's public humiliation, a sense of grim satisfaction washing over me each time his name was dragged through the mud. Tessa, for her part, remained holed up in her apartment, refusing to answer calls or face the world. Aaron tried desperately to reach out to her, but his efforts were met with stony silence. She's devastated, he confided in me, his eyes filled with a mix of pity and frustration. I don't know how to help her through this. I scoffed at his words, my contempt for Tessa's wallowing evident. She made her bed when she chose that scumbag over her own family. Don't expect me to feel sorry for her. As the weeks dragged on, the consequences of Brett's actions rippled outward, affecting those closest to him. Business partners severed ties, friends distanced themselves, and his once promising career lay in ruins. It was during this time that I finally confronted him face to face. Harper and I had made a habit of staking out his apartment, reveling in the schadenfreude of watching him slink home each night, a shell of his former arrogant self. One evening as he emerged from the building, his shoulders hunched and his eyes downcast, I couldn't resist the opportunity. Well, well, if it isn't the disgraced ex-fiancé himself, I called out, my voice dripping with disdain. He whipped around, his eyes widening in recognition and fury. You— he spat, his hands curling into fists. You did this to me, you crazy bitch. Harper moved to intervene, but I held up a hand silencing her. This was my moment, and I intended to savor it. No, Brett, I said, my voice laced with venom. You did this to yourself. All I did was expose the truth about the kind of lying, cheating scumbag you really are. His face contorted with rage, and for a moment I thought he might strike me. But Harper's presence seemed to give him pause— and he settled for hurling insults instead. You're going to pay for this, he snarled. Mark my words, you and your little brat are going to regret the day you crossed me. I threw back my head and laughed, the sound harsh and mocking. Regret? The only thing I regret is not doing this sooner. You got exactly what you deserved, you miserable excuse for a human being. With that, I turned on my heel, leaving him seething in impotent fury. Harper fell into step beside me, her eyes shining with admiration. That was amazing, she breathed. You really showed him. I nodded, a sense of triumph swelling within me. Brett's threats rang hollow. He was a broken man, his power and influence stripped away. It was then that Tessa finally emerged from her self-imposed exile, her face haggard and her eyes rimmed with dark circles. She sought me out, her expression a mixture of sorrow and shame. Mom, she began, her voice trembling. I... I don't know what to say. I was so blind, so incredibly stupid. I regarded her coolly, my anger still simmering beneath the surface. You're right about that. You chose that piece of trash over your own family. Tears welled in her eyes and she dropped to her knees before me, a broken woman. I know, and I'm so sorry. 
Please, you have to believe me, I never meant for things to get so out of hand. Harper hovered nearby, her expression softening as she watched her sister's anguish. I remained unmoved, my heart hardened by years of rejection and pain. Sorry doesn't undo the damage, Tessa. You broke this family, and I don't know if we can ever truly put it back together. Her shoulders shook with sobs, and for a moment I felt a twinge of pity. But the memory of Brett's insults, his utter disrespect, quashed any impulse toward forgiveness. "'I'll do anything,' Tessa pleaded, her voice choked with tears. "'Anything to make things right again.' I gazed down at her, my expression impassive. "'We'll see about that. But mark my words, Tessa, the path to redemption won't be an easy one.' As she wept at my feet, I knew that this was just the beginning of a long and arduous journey— but for the first time in years, I felt a glimmer of hope that our family might one day be whole again. In the aftermath of Brett's downfall, the road to healing was a long and arduous one. Tessa remained steadfast in her remorse, her pleas for forgiveness a constant refrain. I know I don't deserve it, she would say, her eyes brimming with tears. But please, give me a chance to make things right. Aaron, ever the peacemaker, urged me to extend an olive branch. She's our daughter, Delia. We have to try and move past this for the sake of our family. I would regard him coolly, my anger still simmering beneath the surface. She made her choice when she chose that scumbag over us. Why should I forgive her now? Harper, caught in the middle, tried her best to mediate. Mom, she's really trying here. Can't you see how much she's hurting? I would soften, if only a little, that at Harper's words. Our bond, forged in the fires of betrayal, remained unbreakable. Slowly, grudgingly, I began to entertain the idea of reconciliation. Tessa's constant presence, her unwavering efforts to make amends, gradually wore away at the walls I had erected around my heart. It was during one of our strained family dinners that the breakthrough finally came. I know I can never undo the pain I've caused, Tessa said, her voice trembling with emotion. But I swear to you, in the bottom of my heart, that I will spend the rest of my life making it up to you. Her words hung in the air, heavy with sincerity, and for the first time I felt the icy grip of anger begin to thaw. Harper reached across the table, taking my hand in hers. Give her a chance, Mom, please. I met Tessa's gaze, searching for any trace of deception, any hint of the selfishness that had once consumed her. But all I saw was raw, unguarded remorse. With a heavy sigh, I nodded. All right, but understand this, it's going to take time. A lot of time. Tessa's face crumpled with relief, tears streaming down her cheeks. Thank you, she whispered. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. From that day on, the healing process began in earnest. It was a slow, often painful journey, fraught with setbacks and emotional landmines, but Tessa remained steadfast, her commitment to making amends never wavering. Aaron, his eyes shining with pride, watched as our family began to knit itself back together. I knew you could do it he murmured, pulling me into a warm embrace. Harper, my constant ally, beamed with joy as the rifts between us gradually closed. I told you she was worth another chance, she said, her voice filled with affection for her sister. As for me, I navigated the path to forgiveness with cautious optimism. The wounds ran deep, the scars of betrayal still tender. But in Tessa's unwavering remorse, I saw a glimmer of hope, a chance to reclaim the family I had once cherished. It would be a long road, paved with difficult conversations and hard-won trust. But for the first time in years, I allowed myself to believe that we could emerge from this crucible stronger, more resilient, and more tightly bound than ever before. The path to redemption had been set, and though the journey would be arduous, I knew in my heart that we would walk it together as a family.